Neil, it's a fresh one there. Yeah, I suppose the only stat you can separate the players is the long pot success. Yeah, it's okay. Selby's so down at 40% like and the the fifth frame. up at 80. But Neil Robertson that, to break. You can't split these two. Not surprising, really, when you consider that we know their head-to-head -head is 11 for Robertson, 8 for Selby, but even closer, the total frames won by these two in matches against each other. 107, 115 now for Robertson, 111 for Selby. All those frames and hardly anything to choose between them. Possible to play off the main bunch and send the cue ball back up to bulk. Play a little thick contact on it, but it's not the kind of shot that Mark Selby plays often because he knows to be bringing reds into play, possibly putting one near the left corner pocket. So playing off the single red. tight. So I mentioned the slightly low long pot success from Mark Selby. He's got a chance to get that percentage up here. Playing for the black. Beautifully struck. One. May choose to take blue instead. Just depends on if you can reach the black, really. It's a bit awkward. That looks to be. Quite straightforward, just a direct screw back for the red to right corner. Six. So now back up from blue and looking for an angle to be able to go into the bunch. And you look to the black there, I don't know if he can play black and take the cue ball off the side cushion into the bunch but I think the blue is the optimum colour to do this what's that cue ball to stop, 30. he's over hit this a little bit I think no, that's okay slightly more acute angle than he'd like but he can still get into the, the middle of the pink ball here send the reds everywhere played it very well He's got one, the red next to the pink. 18. To the left corner, is he? So I'm going to look at it. Body language looks good. It's walking around. But it was only nudged up there at the very last minute by another red. Questionable. Mm. 
I may have to just put a little trace of left hand side just to create the angle. He knows he's guaranteed to be on the black. Possibly pink as well, but he's going to be on a colour. So just can put his full concentration into the pot, knowing the position will take care of itself. Just a little dab of left hand side. It's tight though. Ninety. The pace coaxed it into the pocket, as did yeah. the newly recloth table. That caught a lot of jaw. Yeah, it's not a swerve as such. It's just uh, applying a little bit of left hand side just to push the, the, the cue ball out to the to the right a little bit and you have enough on it for the cloth to grab it to bring it back on line. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. I did have a game today with Ken on the, the practice tables, and because I'm not on tour, I don't get the chance to play on these cloths, and it's just they're just an absolute pleasure to play on. You hardly have to touch the cue ball to be able to move it around. Beautiful conditions. Newsflash, Stephen, you are on tour if you want to be. 42. Don't you start. Already had folds in my case. Sign up for the shootout. 42. Again, there's a quite a bit of angle in this red. But because, as I said, the cloth's so reactive, you can hold this for the black quite comfortably. Forty three. Cloth is probably playing a bit like the greens will be next week at Augusta Phil. Fifth one from the very first match here on Monday, it was obvious the conditions were pristine. 51. Selby, you know, there gets and fairly labelled as a, a grinder, but he's a really heavy scorer. Take this for instance. These two, between them, have made 52 centuries in matches against each other. And Selby's made more than Robertson, 27 to 25. When he wants to be, he can pile on the points. Sorry, fellas. I had to eulogise again about the, the cloth. The, 
The reaction, the acceleration in the cue ball from that last red screen back for 56. the blue. Fifty-six. With virtually zero effort. Fifty-seven. A little cannon here. The two reds, the right-hand side one, I think he'll cannon. Just nudge that away, leave the other one to the left corner. Possibly the other one to the left middle. He's got a choice of both. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. I often think the older generation of players, they wouldn't quite believe just how conducive conditions are these days to scoring. Another sizable break here, another one Seven. visit frame. Yeah, it's great to see Selby scoring like this, because I think for three or four years he was kind of winning most of his matches with his, I mean, not his B game, his C game, kind of just grinding out wins, but this is the real Mark Selby. When he gets in, just clearing the table. And this kind of scoring combined with what is, you know, probably, w if not the best, one of the best tactical games in snooker. Very, very difficult to beat. Eighty one. While winning his first round match here, Mark Selby took his total career prize money over six million pounds and tonight you can see why he's been so so successful 88 96. Ninety-seven. Well, that was a new cloth pot going in. That would not have gone in yesterday. <laughs> Terrific century, though, nevertheless. One hundred and four. One hundred and six. And now Selby will be keen to upgrade from century to total clearance. 109. This really has been flawless from start to finish. One hundred and thirty. OK, might not be as fast as the likes of a Sullivan, Trump, even his opponent, but has been snooker perfection in this break. 118. 
124. Mark Shelby and his finest, 131 total clearance, and for the third time this evening, he takes the lead at 3-2. But we all know Neil Robertson capable of drawing level once more. The last time these two met. On ITV, it was an absolute classic quarter-final of the Tour Championship in Clandidno in March last year. Selby had three centuries, Robertson had two, and it was Robertson who won 9-8 on the final black. If we went the distance tonight, no one would be shocked, although, again, as he did in the previous frame, He's left Selby a red from distance. One. Well, they didn't pot that red in the middle of the pocket. That's why he's lost the cue ball. But still, a good long pot. He must have heard me at the start saying his long pot success was, was down. Two out of Green two ball. since the break. Mark Selby one. Well, nothing easy left, but the fact remains that was an errant safety and not the restart after the interval that Robertson would have wanted. This is not easy. One. That's well played. We managed to stop the cue ball from going in front of the green as well, which should have hampered his next shot. into almost like a game Six. of basketball. The players are just going up one end and scoring and then up the other end and scoring. And it's just anything you can do, I can do better at the moment. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. 
when the playing conditions are as good as this, it's almost like you just you just enjoy being at the table. You almost forget you're in a match because you're just loving playing all the shots that you can play. Both these two would stay out there all night if they could. 22. Twenty-three. Played this nicely. Struck it nicely. The only thing when you see the cue ball had a little bit of check side, which took it down towards the black again, which straightened up the angle on the black. He's going to take a good shot now to get position on his next red. Not sure if the red to the right, the pink goes to the left middle. I'm struggling to see how red it can play for. And on the red to the extreme left of the bunch, now you can see how that red goes. There's a couple that go to the middle pocket, each middle pocket. But unfortunately for Neil, the black is now going to go up to the. Hmm. If it's in the pink spot, and that's awkward now. I think that's end of break. I don't think he'll be playing a pot now. Because he can't get position. And this red to left middle is such an acute angle. And he's going to have to play it with loads of topspin to get the cue ball up for the blue. The pot's difficult enough. Here we go. And let's just not feel forget so confident the that he wants to take it out of the pocket. Caused him an awful lot of problems when he played in the previous group on Monday. He missed a, a lot of pots easier than this into that target. No value in playing that red. Neil Robertson. 30. That's beautiful touch. Beautiful touch. Little touch of run inside. Accelerate the cue ball off the cushion.
Mm, for Mark Sabbath, that's a bad shot. He knows it. Okay, he's got a decent cue ball. But no way did he want to put this red where it is, over that right corner pocket. Five. Smashing conditions, but as we've said, sometimes there is a drawback. The cue ball occasionally just drifts on and on. Robertson couldn't quite believe that. He thought it was going to stop maybe three or four inches earlier than it did. His positional success has been pretty good. Selby's has been terrific. and was genuinely surprised he didn't obtain position there. Neil Robertson, five. The table running as smooth as silk. Selby just floating that cue ball back under the ball cushion. They can play the red as closest to the right corner as a kind of a shot to nothing. Only way you wouldn't want to hit it is thick. Anything less than quarter ball will be fine. In fact, he played the other one. The cue ball's running a bit wild. And you'll be pretty happy with that. Okay, there is a pot on. Red, just above the black spot to the left corner. Decent angle on the brown.
5. Like so with five. Stephen, you can feel the intensity out there. Two consummate professionals battling for every slight edge. Yeah, it could well be frames like this that, are, that will decide the winner of this match. Slightly more scrappy frames. Every frame so far has been one with at least a 60 break. This looks like being a frame that's possibly going to be one a different way. It could be pivotal. You would normally probably back Mark Selby to prevail in frames like this more often than not. No, oh, that's a wonderful yeah. pop. He felt it was worth the risk, look where the cue ball was going. The only one he was leaving was the one he was going for, but this was magnificent. Both tall men, so their reach isn't in question. But even here, Selby requires just a little bit of help with the extension on the back of the queue. Certainly not a straightforward Five. chance. The way the pink and black are. We'll play for the blue here. Now, be interesting if he decides to place some sort of cannon on that red and black a red, black, red, pink row of balls there Seventeen. Mark Selby. 
70. Astounding, not just the miss, but the the amount he, he missed it by. Yeah, not sure what happened there. He sort of gave the green a filthy look after he missed the shot, where they just felt it was yeah. it was awkward because of where the green was. I don't know. But very surprising miss. Yeah, he sort of points at the green, doesn't he, with his cue? I don't know what he was meaning. What a bonus for Robertson. Yeah, I think the black's available to right middle here. Just a little, just a little gentle cannon on the red below the one he's going to pot. And you see, black will clearly pot. Didn't even need Seven. the cannon. Let's have a look from all sides at that red and pink, because that's obviously the problem now in making a winning clearance. He's already 19 points in front, so black 26. He's only going to need two more reds in colours. Tell you, Mark, so we need a snooker. Fourteen. The red in the bulk area doesn't pot anywhere, so he's going to need an angle on the black, or possibly blue. Well, where he's left the cue ball, he's going to have to play a cannon on the brown here to leave the red to left middle. Hmm, well, that shot tells me the red passes a green. I didn't think it did from the camera angle we have. So that's Twins. a bonus. You see, clearly goes. 21. The Brown will put Robertson 37 ahead with 35 on. One more red for peace of mind. 25. Neil Robertson. Or a snooker. 25. But Selby is so phenomenal at getting out of snookers, and indeed, if he gets the opportunity of trapping his opponent in them, that Robertson's guard will not be dropping in any way, shape or form. This will hurt Mark, Mark Selby though, to, if he does lose this frame, get a chance to open a two frame advantage. And both these players know exactly how important at this stage of this match or every frame is. To open a two frame gap would have been priceless at this stage of the match. Foul. No Robertson foul. Had he left that, he would have conceded, but the red ran safe. And so Selby thinking to himself, well, two snookers, one red left. I've done this umpteen times.
Robertson knows that in this exchange he could be in a lot of trouble on a lot of occasions. We've seen it time and again where Selby, when he gets into a position he can dictate tactically, he really does control proceedings. When he wants snookers, he can lay one after the other. Foul. Mark Selby four. Well, the only positive about that shot, it was better than being wide, because had he been so, the black might have been contacted and that would have been calamitous. As it is, Selby still needs one snooker. Already by some distance, this the lengthiest frame of the match. Tables turned. And now that should be that. Five. Seven. Seven. Fourteen. Resilience from Robertson. Twenty five. It's taken thirty one minutes this frame 
but it's been worth the investment. 32 in the front. Three yeah. times Robertson has fallen a frame adrift. On all three occasions, he's responded positively. It's 3-3. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. He 
has got an angle here to go into the bunch. I don't think he really wants to because there's loose reds, but he just plays a sort of soft cannon, just misses the pink just to the right as we look. Yeah, not too much pace, but that's a little bit unlucky. 22. He's done well with the rest tonight so far, Selby. Seven pots out of eight. But this is a tester. A real tester into a blind pocket. With the cue ball and the object ball so far away from him. and well controlled. It would have been a problem anyway, as it turned out, but that shot helped just a tad by the fact that Brown wasn't on its spot. 28. Now you can see the standard that these two players 34. are playing at. You would expect that from these two. One of the biggest events 35. in the sport. Two players both in the top four in the world. You would expect both players to be over 90%. This is when the, the best players bring their A game. When you get to the business end of these tournaments. Forty. Forty one. It really is the optimum environment for excellence. As Stephen said, two elite players up against each other. playing conditions, nothing short of a dream. The prestige of the tournament. 48. And of course, a £150,000 first prize. If all of those factors don't crystallise the thoughts, not a lot will. Yeah, it's obviously a shame that there's no live crowd in to witness this incredible match, but hopefully a lot of people at home are enjoying this. 56. And you see, it looks like a giant spider. The table in the middle. Very cool. 57. I don't think he'll risk the little cannon, the red to the left of the three 
I don't think he'll risk that because he's already 57 ahead. Black puts him 64 ahead, so black, red, black. The loose red will be enough to secure this frame. Sixty five. He really is having a smashing season. Seven seats. Mark Selby. Seventy three. Reach the semi final groups of the Championship League. One of the European Masters, as Neil Falls mentioned earlier this evening. And also the semi finals of the English Open. 81. Don't know about you, Stephen, but I think this is the best I've seen him look for ages. Yeah, there was times during the World Championship. 88. And you start to look more like the Mark Selby that we know. But this has been an excellent 89. performance. I thought he was very good in his match against Karen Wilson to come back from 4-0 down. He got stronger as the match went on. His opponent got weaker. And that's what this man can do to you. But tonight, whenever he's got in... OK, he missed one in the last frame. Which 90. was surprising, but whenever he's got in, generally, you don't expect him to miss. Second century in three 95. frames coming up. One hundred and third century of what's turning out to be a classic. 103. Yeah, we're going to be second centre in three frames, second total clearance in three frames. 110. Doesn't get much better than putting every ball on the table. 112. 150. Made total clearances to actually clinch tournaments, including the 147 against Ronnie O'Sullivan in Birmingham. That must be a, a wonderful feeling. 119. Yeah, as I said earlier, I think we keep going on about the conditions, but when the conditions are this good, you just enjoy being at the table because it lets you play every shot you want to play with minimum effort. But yeah, you say it doesn't get much better than just hoovering up the table. 130. 137. So much for being a grinder. He's much more than that. Every time Robertson strikes back, Selby stands his ground. Now, what a time it would be for Mark Selby to open a two-frame gap for the first time. Be 
beautiful break off. Brought two or three reds into the open and got that cue ball welded to the bolt cushion. That is an absolutely fabulous reply. Foul and a miss. No Robertson four. Took his time, weighed up the options. In the end, though, just turned around to Rob Spencer, our referee, and said, replace them, please. Mark. Right, line, but definitely a bit closer, right I'll check it. Can we check it, Tatiana? It gets a bit closer to the cushion. Closer to me. Okay. Mark. Is that right, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Neil? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tatiana. Foul and a miss. Neil Robertson four. Now then, in and out of bulk, mid range red left. Robertson very interested in this. What? Screw into the main bunch here. Won't we'll play it with a lot of pace, but that will offer him a choice of two or three reds. And just a gentle little cannon. He's actually Eight. can breathe a sigh of relief because he could quite easily have not been on this red. Where the cue ball sort of nestled in the middle of all the bunch. Now here's a little oddity. That's the first ball that Robertson's potted with the rest. So far this evening, the first ball he's attempted with the rest this evening. Now, Stephen, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> 16. Well, I mean, I think we're entitled to think it because the standard of break building with these two tonight 17. has been outstanding. We've had three centuries already and the Reds are in perfect position. So I don't think it's been too far-fetched. Twenty-four. And the fact that the pink is tied thumb. up, black's actually the easiest ball to play for at the moment. I may choose to play another little cannon into the bunch here. Pretty much as if he was playing a cannon on the pink if the reds weren't there. That's a, that's a direction he wants to take the cue ball. 
Well, he's not going to do it. He's not going to risk it yet. Thirty-two. Mm, that might be the end of the dream. I think he wants to play for the black. don't know what sort of angle the red to right middle is. It looks to be taking the cue ball away. I mean, it's not a difficult shot to take the cue ball in and out of bulk, but yeah, it's too much angle to screw back for the black, you would say. At this stage of the match, semi-final of a tournament like this, you don't want to be taking risks. Thirty-three. Yeah, and there's no prize for a maximum, so it would only be for the, the prestige of doing it on this occasion that you'd be playing for. Hmm. Okay, he's on the red. 38. It's a right corner, but it's unfortunate because the red's come and stopped him playing for the black to the left corner pocket. And I'm not sure it was an actual angle to, f to come off one cushion and play the black into the same pocket, so he's got a tricky little positional shot here because he's bridging over those four reds. And you can see there it's a thinner cut than it looks on the other view that we have. He's looking to see the direction the cue ball's going to take. If he just plays playing ball off one cushion, is he going to be on the black to the same pocket? Thirty-nine. Yeah, it was well worked out. The difficult part of that shot is if he flicked any side at all in the cue ball, it would have been nowhere. So he had to make sure make sure he played that absolutely dead centre of the cue ball. Not as easy as you would think. Forty six. Forty Fifty five. And on the left hand side of those four reds. Hmm, obviously there's a plant. It's a right corner. 62. Yeah, unmissable. Sixty-three. This is a stunning game, game of snooker Phil. The very best, isn't it, when you've got two world-class players and, of course, these two 
fall into that category. 69. Playing really nicely, simultaneously. Yeah, I thought last night was good. The Sullivan and Mark Allen in terms of winning frames in one visit, break building, but this is... 76. This match has eclipsed that one. These two players, they just look like they're having fun out there, enjoying every minute of it. And with that labouring a point here, we have to say that one of the stars of the show is this table itself. So congratulations to our table fitter, Pete Godwin, who's produced a peach. 84. Eighty-five. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. Believe it or not, snooker is actually quite difficult. One hundred. One hundred and one. Robertson's century break production is off the scale. This is 24th of the season already. 108. 109. Yeah, Neil and Judd have got some sort of wager between themselves who makes the most this season. The only two players are to make over a hundred centuries in a single season. One hundred and fourteen. One hundred and sixty. In the back of his mind to do it again this season. One hundred ninety. Yes, they'll be here again next week for the German Masters qualifiers. With the opportunity to pad the total. And this is a possible 1 4 1, which would be the highest break of the event so far. And of course, the third total clearance in the last four frames. Mind bending stuff. 134. 141. A masterful, marvellous masterclass from both. Again, they're all square. 4-4, four, four, cracking.
the ninth Two frame. wonderful players going head to head. Neil Robertson to break. Playing terrific snooker. Neil Robertson's just made a 1 4 1 break. That is sixth century of the tournament. Matching the current mark of Judd Tremp, who we'll see tomorrow night. Well, Mark will be absolutely horrified to see that red go through that gap and go over the right corner pocket. He can't believe it. He played a fabulous safety shot. Look at the cue ball. little kiss on the red I mean he's just played this shot to perfection you can look at the gap it's gone through is probably only enough room for a ball and look at the cue ball That's the kind of fine margins that could decide this match. Thanks, Neil. Seven. Eight. You've entered the zone many times, Stephen. I suppose the, the toughest thing to do when you keep potting balls, keep scoring, is to sustain concentration. Fifty. Sixty. I think when you're in this kind of form, as you say, you're in that zone. I think you could just stay out there all night making sentry breaks. As I said, it could come down to little things like that that just happened to Mark Selby. It could decide who wins this semi-final. Twenty-one. Mm, that's worked out okay. Okay, the black and pink are not in great positions, but as long as you've got at least a red to go, go far, and you can screw the cue ball back for the blue here. I'm not sure if you can even play for the black, but I think this is screw back. You've always got to be aware of the right middle pocket playing these shots. I think he's looking to see if he can play for the black here. You can see the black clearly goes to the same pocket. Now he's decided against it. 22. And he's managed to avoid the right middle pocket. Selby is an undeserving, no doubt a grieved spectator. Look at the pot success rate since the interval. 99% for Robertson, 96 for Selby. Mm, yeah, another example of fine margins. Look for the world that he was going to be absolutely perfect here. He played the shot as well as you could play it. Top spin just coming around off two cushions. He knew the two reds and the pink. He just maybe 
hit them. He's going to be on a red and he's... Nothing easy. He's got a red to the yellow pocket. Nice pop. I thought we'd have played it with more topspin to get right side of the blue. He obviously wanted to make sure the cue ball went to the right side of the table should he have missed it. He wasn't leaving anything on. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Another fabulous shot. Right in the middle of the pocket. Couldn't have picked up the cue ball with his hand and put it in a better place. He can basically play whatever shot he wants here. He can play for open reds. If he wants, he can go into the three reds and pink. He can go into the red and black. So many options because he's so perfect in the blue. Thirty nine. Forty. Not quite as perfect this time. He's got more angle, which has kind of forced his cause. He's got to go into the reds here. He's got too much angle to hold for the open red. So I would say into the three reds and pink. 45. Well, he played for that gap. <laughs> it's a fabulous shot. I don't think he did. 45. But he's playing so well. I suppose you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt. There's the gap Stephen was talking about. The only problem... He's now using the spider. Forty six. That was really well judged. He's just wrapped in a cocoon of concentration. And you know, yes, the main thing is winning the frame, but He's got his sights on yet another century. That's his mentality. <clears throat> 53. Fifty-four. Such a great feeling as a snooker player when you come to the table and you just, whatever, wherever the balls are situated, you just know you're going to clear the table. And that's exactly where well, both these players are actually when they get in. 61. Robertson just a couple of pots away. Going in front for the first time tonight. 62 69 70 
here's where all this brake came from. A wonderful safety shot after a great break from the Robertson. 77. Well, Selby thought he'd played a worldie. I was horrified to see the red go through the cap over the corner pocket, and this has been the result. Tough school. 78. Eighty-five. Eighty-six. Just nudging out the red. Zoning in on a century as Selby. Sits there thinking, just a little flick. Don't find the gap and I might have had these. Oh, what a shame. Now, if he pots one from here, every credit. 93. What a shame that was. I love how angry he is. He just wants another century. You have 94. got to be kidding me. He will love that, especially if the blood goes in. He'll love it. Stop it. I mean, just stop it. 101. 102. The next goal now, Stephen, is to make another total clearance. The fourth in five frames, it would be. I mean, we've seen the double in the black that Judd Trump finished his match with, and now we've seen that. 107. No wonder these two make so many centuries. Nothing safe. 109. 109. He was almost embarrassed when that double went in. 112. Again, this is off probably one of Mark Selby's best safety shots of the night. Just very unlucky. One hundred and twenty-one. The modern players have raised the game of snooker to a, a new plateau. Confirmation here this evening. Yeah, no total clearance, but what a performance this is from both players. And now it's Neil Robertson in the ascendancy, gaining yet another century. Thanks to this, we thought he was going to be denied. Think again. 5-4 to the Australian. When you crunch the numbers, mind-boggling. For the match, Robertson's pot success rate is 96%. 151 out of 157. Selby, he spotted 142 balls out of 151 attempts. Robertson would be a bit disappointed with that miss. It wasn't easy, but the way he's playing, he would have seen that as an opportunity. Yeah, a little shake of the head. A chance for Mark Selby. Red to left corner. Stun across for the black to the same pocket. Something on his cue.
slightly hampered by the brown here, which just just takes some of his attention. It's not a natural setup. So he's kind of aiming down on this. But what a shot. What a shot. Oh. Right in the middle of the pocket. I mean, that was just struck so cleanly. The opening pot all the more laudable given that it was his first pot for 29 Eight. minutes playing time. That punctuated a sequence of 270 Nine. and answered points from Robertson. Yeah, sure. So he's still not entirely happy with his cue. So both players have got damp and dry towels out there, which is perhaps just as well because this obviously solves the problem while the referee is cleaning the cue ball. Twenty two. Twenty three. Thirty. Thirty-one. Look at that beautiful reaction on the cue ball. The timing of the shot and the receptiveness of the cloth combined to make that look preposterously easy. Well, let's face it, Stephen, they've both made the game look preposterously easy. 36. 37. So, that's the big shot so far in this frame. Black into the bunch. Can they split nicely? Leave them on a red. Well, he's got one. It's not as easy as he would have liked. It does offer Falsy automatic fall. position on the black. And the only red he can leave is actually the one he's playing, so not a lot of pressure on this pot. Right in the middle again. 45. There's the, the pace that Mark Selby's playing at as well, which is so impressive. And he's actually down in a shot. It's literally just a couple of waggles and, and it's away. Always in the middle of the pocket. No hesitation like there has been in the last sort of four or five years since he lost his world number one. 52. It's very positive. Fifty-three. And you have to think that's the influence of Chris Henry, who's done such great work with not just snooker players, but so many sportsmen. He gets their mind in the right place.
that will do. Fifty-nine. What a contest. Six. One point between them. So close, one of them might demand a recount. Sixty five. It's all black to leave Neil in a snooker. Definitely a red to right middle available, one to the right of the three. And this is the red that will stop Neil Robertson coming back to the table. 72. It's actually got a choice of two reds to the right middle. What a view. Beautiful. 73. Would you bet against another total clearance here, Phil? I wouldn't. This is just top drawer. I think all things considered, Eight. the stage it's being played on, the personnel involved, Eight. the rhythm of the match, I'd put it in the top ten of all time. 88. I've never seen a better best of 11 match than this. 89. It's just been an actual break building clinic from both players. 96. Ninety seven. One mistake and your opponent pots every single ball on the table. Doesn't get much tougher than that. One hundred and four. One hundred and five. The sixth century in seven frames. The fourth century in succession. One hundred and ten. One hundred and twelve. You know, in the quarter-final of the Tour Championship, last year, Selby made three centuries and lost. Couldn't happen again, could it? One hundred and ninety. There's a phrase here, Stephen, I hate when I hear it. Shame, they've got to be a loser. But I think it applies tonight. Right the first time, I hate that. It's top sport. There has to be a loser, I'm afraid. 130. These players have both contributed to an unbelievable match. 137. It's 5-5. Five, five. Please join us after the break to see who prevails. We've already seen... A wonderful exhibition.
of one three sevens. Five five. All on this. And you might be surprised to know, Stephen, that they've had four deciders in the past, and Robertson has won all four. Well, I can't believe I'm about to say these words, but I quite fancy a little tense decider rather than just one in one hit. Getting a bit bored while these centuries now, Phil. There's a first for everything. Just to hammer home the point, pot success rate 96 for Robertson, 95 for Selby. Total clearances all over the place. Robertson just edging the high break. Smooth as well. Average shot time, 21 and 22 seconds respectively. There's Robertson deciding frame wins 5-4 before a massive crowd in the quarterfinal of the 2017 Hong Kong Masters. 4-3, first round of the champion of champions. That was in 2018. To a championship we've mentioned before last year, 9-8. And the semi-finals of this season's English Open, 6-5. When he made a 90-plus break in the decider, he'd love to do that again here. And Neil's got a chance of a red here to left corner pocket, and he can play it with a degree of safety because. Again, the only one, only ready he'll leave is the one he's playing. He'll leave the cue ball near that left middle pocket. You can understand the hesitancy given what is at stake. The winner of this frame will go through to the final to take on Mark Allen or 
Judd Trump. And in the case of Robertson, it will give him the opportunity to maybe successfully defend the title. Again, he may be able to get through the pot and angle. I think he thinks he can, but it's how he's getting the cue ball out of there. Don't know if, can. if he has to look, put a little bit of swerve on it, then it's tougher to play the top spin shot. Looking to see if the black's available to the right corner. It certainly looks there that there's, there's plenty of room to pot the red. He is playing it beside, you can see clearly him in the left hand side of the cue ball. One. Looks like he may have the pink to the middle, but bridging over the red. Oh, this is tough. He's not playing the pot because there's no way he'd be standing here where he is now if he was playing the pot in the pink. So finding the most awkward place in that bolt cushion to leave the cue ball. Max Selby one. Up off the shot almost immediately, caught the ping too thin, and then the bump of the middle pocket. How costly will that be? One. Not as played. Play to get round the back of the red for the black, but he'll take that. Can he nudge those two reds away from the black spot? He's, he's just trying to get round the back of that red. decided probably on fine margins and that was a pretty fine margin there to get position on the black. Eight. <clears throat> Black spot occupied. 
only other spot available all the way down on the green. Nine. Wouldn't be surprised if you see the average shot time come down, go up, I should say, because it's a deciding frame. You put that little bit extra into every single shot because you're thinking if I don't take this chance, I might not get another one. Just thinking, last night we saw acrimony. Tonight we've seen accuracy. that underscores the title of the tournament champion of champions the cream of the crop Twelve. So often in any decider anywhere, the scoring tap tends to be turned off. So no pot on. Can you get the cue ball behind that green? Or does he want to leave the cue ball somewhere in the bolt cushion to let Mark Selby have a shot to play a safety shot off the bunch of reds? Mark Selby's so good at getting out of snookers. I prefer the second option. And get that cue ball glued to the bolt cushion, force him to play a shot off the reds. It could create an opportunity. Neil Robertson. Twelve. Foul. And a miss. Neil Robertson, four. You can see they're dead set for the pocket, but there's plenty of distance between the reds. I think you've got your wish, Stephen. The tension has been cranked up to maximum. Match time, three hours plus. You could watch this for six.
I smile. Another excellent safety shot. Another excellent safety shot where he's put a red over the right corner pocket. Okay, it's not hanging over the pocket. Nothing easy at this stage. So a reprieve for Mark Selby. It's only going to cost him one point. So you left your cue ball somewhere over where the yellow pocket is. That's not an easy safety shot to get right and not leave a red over that right corner pocket. Green ball. Neil Robertson. So Neil's what? allowed Mark Selby to get to the right side of the table, which I think is, is a pretty comfortable shot now. He could even find himself behind the green himself here, Neil. I don't think that was the best shot he could have played there. No one here, but so many watching at home, all around the world. First glance, it looked like a good kiss on the brown, but the brown has gone. It's still potable to the yellow pocket, but as you see, he can't avoid hitting the green. So, can he deep screw this? Bring the cue ball back up the table off the green. Brown ball. That's what he's playing. Mm, didn't seem to get any screw on the cue ball, but he's got a pot to the left corner. Five. Neil Robertson, five. Well, that wasn't the deciding frame. That was almost a gimme for Neil Robertson the way he's playing tonight. That's purely the importance of the moment of this match has made him miss that. It's as though some unseen force has said, OK, fellows, you've entertained. Now you'll grind.
Not many shot times over a minute in this contest. The deliberation is entirely understandable. You know the psychology, Stephen. What's worse, playing really well and losing or playing very poorly and losing? I think the disappointment of playing poorly is, is, is the oh. more intense no, sort of emotion after a match. Very unlucky here from Mark Selby. But if you play well, I mean, a loss is a loss at the end of the day. I mean, I hate losing, so it doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, if you've, you know, other players just dominated you and you've not, you couldn't do anything about it, then it's almost better. The worst thing is when you've had chances, like in a decider. If you've had a chance to win the match and not taken it, that's worse. Playing well will be no consolation, but all of a sudden... It's just incredible isn't it, what pressure does. Machines have become humans. I suppose if you you play well, like as well as both these players have played, whoever loses, I suppose you can take that to the next tournament as, you know, well, I'm playing really well. You know, a win's going to come. But that's scant consolation, I suppose, for not being in the final. This match like a, a sumptuous cake. The filling, quality. The icing, drama. That was not played. It has to be said that any little bit of good luck at the moment is going the Australians' way. Not been a lot of run of the balls tonight, but certainly Neil's getting it, if there's any. Played for the ball cushion there, not up behind the black. It would be a shame if this match was decided by a bit of good fortune but that's snooker I'm afraid let me see it he's just trying to get that cue ball onto the bolt cushion too much pace Foul, and a mess. Neil Robertson, four. Has the great escapologist left the red 
Ooh, it's borderline. Fuck. One revolution away there. Mark Selby from leaving a simple pot and who knows what that might have led to. Yeah, we can check it, yeah. No, no, it's fine. Fine, Mark, so it's fine, yeah. In a way, the fact that there's no crowd here almost adds to the intensity of the situation. It's so silent in there. Brilliant shot, absolutely brilliant shot. He really is the great escapologist. He conceives the shots, then he executes time and time again. Oh, it's so difficult because you've got to get enough speed in your cue action to get the swerve on. But you've got to play it slow enough so that the QR doesn't go careering into the reds. Watched in horror as the cue ball and the red both came into the bulk air of the table. But let me tell you, this red isn't easy, and he's got to play it with pace to get the cue ball out to a color. It's nothing easy now in this frame. That was a great yeah. shot. Already got a 30 point lead, Neil Robertson. Good shot. Yeah, 30 point lead, and there's well, more than enough reds in the open to win the match at this visit. I presume he's looking to see if the pink goes. Looks like it from that picture. And one good positional shot here. Could seal victory. Five. Well, he said, didn't he? After last year's final, it was the best match he's ever been involved in. He might need to revise his opinion. Well, he wouldn't have played in many better, any better best of 11s than this. 
Probably any better semi finals. As I say, it's the best, best of 11 I've ever seen. Last year, he survived three 12. consecutive disorders against Sean Murphy, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and Trump. Is he going to engage in successful brinkmanship again? Thirteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Well, played that well. I think the red immediately below the pink possibly will pot. Well, maybe not looking at that picture. Thought it may pot to the same pocket. But play for the black. The red is in the black spot. Pink, enough to leave Mark Selby needing a snooker. 26. Twenty-seven. Come and have another look at that red. That angle, it doesn't look like it pots, but if he gets low in it, Possibly he will be able to put it into the left corner. But this is could be match ball. And it looks to me from that picture where the cue balls ended up that this red pots. You know, feel incredible inside now, Neil Robertson, having come through this unbelievable match. Thirty four. And Selby's fate is confirmed. Spare a thought for him. What a contribution he's made to the evening. Forty. Forty-one. These guys are good, Stephen. Yeah, they've put on a show tonight. A break building masterclass. Doesn't get any better than this. 48. And we've got the world number one to come tomorrow night. 54. Neil Robertson, 54. Neil Robertson refusing to let go of his crown. That was simply superlative oh, snooker. And it's Robertson who gloriously marches into the final. He's defeated Mark Selby 6-5. An authentic classic.